Today, I will show you a horror mystery film from 2019 titled Midsummer. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Danny is worried about her parents who aren't picking up their phone. She sits at her computer, re-reading her sister's ominous message, suspicious about what she means by it. Unsure of what to do, Danny calls her boyfriend for reassurance. He tells her that she's putting too much thought into her sister's email and that it's probably another grab for attention. She's a little upset because it sounds like he doesn't understand that her sister is bipolar. Even though Danny is in tears, she still agrees with his opinion. After that call, she paces around her apartment, talking to a friend about her boyfriend. She's worried that she's being too needy, but her friend tells her that if he feels that way then maybe he's not the right one. During the call, she sends another email to her sister. Suddenly, she gets a second call from an unknown number. Meanwhile, Danny's boyfriend Christian is out with his friends, talking to them about her. They suggest that he should leave her because she's too overbearing, but he worries that if he does that he might regret it later. He suddenly gets another call from her and leaves the table to answer. Christian picks up the phone, only to hear her screaming and crying on the other side of the line. He walks to her apartment and later he's seen comforting her as she continues to cry uncontrollably because her entire family died. Simultaneously, firemen are seen breaking into her parents' house. They find them dead in their own bed. Her sister has killed herself and taken them with her. A while later, Danny is lying on her bed, depressed. Christian comes in and tells her that he'll go to a party. She says that she'll join him, even though he's not particularly eager about that. At the party, Danny's interest is sparked by a conversation her boyfriend and his friends. Pell, Josh and Mark are having about the summer trip to Sweden the group had been planning. It's the first time she's hearing about it and the trip is in two weeks. Back at her apartment, she confronts him, asking why he didn't tell her. He tries to weasel around the issue, but Danny doesn't understand why Christian wasn't open. With her. She doesn't have a problem with him going on the trip. He says he's sorry, and she tells him that she doesn't need an apology, just openness. Danny softens, worried that he'll leave, then asks if he'll be going because of his thesis. He still doesn't know what that will be. Sometime after, Christian is hanging out with his friends, and they're talking about Sweden. Danny calls him to say that she'll be up in a moment. While waiting, Christian tells them that he invited her on the trip, but that she won't go, even though she said yes. They're upset with him, but promise to act as if they knew about the invitation and as they don't have a problem with it. Danny arrives and they all greet her nicely, but act super awkward toward her. Mark asks Christian to join him in the other room. Pell chats with Danny, while Josh completely ignores her. She asks about the week he had planned for the group in his village, because her birthday will be on the same day that they'll be arriving. He tells her that it's actually a nine-day festival held by his small community. Pell shows her some photos of previous festivities, and she's very impressed. Suddenly, he turns to her and says, with all honesty, that he's very glad that she'll be coming with them. He also tells her that he's very sorry about her parents and that he can empathize, because he had also lost his own. Danny gets upset and runs to the bathroom. On the plane to Europe, Danny cries in the toilet. They arrive to Sweden and drive to Pell's village located somewhere in the north of the country. The group stops in a field where all the other young people coming back home have gathered. Pell is greeted by his brother Ingmar, who introduces them to his friends Simon and Connie. Ingmar gives them some shrooms, and they all take it, even though Danny is reluctant at first. Later, they sit under a tree and feel the effects of the drug. Mark is not having a good time. Pell guides them through the experience, talking about the nature surrounding them. Danny hears distant singing and freaks out. She walks by a group of people and they all laugh at her. Ingmar tries to calm her, but she runs to the bathroom. 
Inside she has some kind of horrible hallucination, then she dreams about her family. She wakes up and Christian tells her that they've been waiting for her to wake up for. 6 hours. The entire group of young people walk through the woods and eventually arrive at the village. Where the people from the community welcome them. They are already wearing their festival clothes and playing music. Danny enjoys the serene atmosphere of the place, smiling and taking it all in. Pell greets one of the elders, who welcomes them eagerly. He tells them that the official festivities will begin the next day. Suddenly, their attention is drawn by music, leading them to the center of the village. The elder SIV welcomes all of them to the festival and wishes them a happy midsummer. She says that it had been 90 years since their last feast and that it will be 90 more until the next one. They raise their glasses and cheer. Simultaneously, a disabled child is shown drawing and not participating in the ceremony. SIV passes a torch to an older woman and then a second one to an older man, proclaiming something to the heavens. Meanwhile, Maya is seen getting ready in a washroom. Music starts outside and she joins the celebration. She sees the group sitting on the sidelines as the villagers dance around them. Later, Maya kicks Christian's bottom as she passes by him during the dance. Him and Josh go to join in. Pell gives Danny a gift for her birthday and she tells him that Christian forgot about it. She thanks him for the portrait. After a while, Pell gives the group a tour around the village and answers Josh's questions about the community. They see a few children having a lesson in the grass and he tells them that they are learning about the power of the ancient runes. Kony asks Danny and Christian how long they've been together and they give a different answer. During the tour, Christian spots a building in the distance. It's a sacred temple, which no one is allowed to enter. The group splits up in two. Ingmar and his guests pass by a caged bear. He shows them a long parchment that tells a love story. Pell takes his friends to their accommodation in a beautifully decorated cabin, which is shared by all of the people of the community. Danny goes to look around the building and finds a wall of photos with the May Queens. Meanwhile, Pell tells Christian that he forgot her birthday. Danny asks about the wall, prompting the whole group to come over. Christian calls her outside and starts singing happy birthday to her while trying to light a birthday candle. He lies to her first, saying that he didn't forget but got messed up because of the constant daylight. But when she sees through him, he apologizes and she blows out the candle. That night, everyone is preparing for bed and Pell tells them that the first day of the festival is very important. Josh knows why, but neither him nor Pell share that with the rest of them. Christian wants to search for it, but has no cell service. The next day, the celebration for the first day of the festival is underway. Everyone joins the community table in front of the sacred temple, as young girls are seen. Picking flowers. Christian asks how long they will have to stand and Pell tells him that they'll stand. Until it's right to sit. Danny comes over and gives him flowers, then a boy rings a bell and the old couple that received the torches the previous day arrive at the table. The two of them sit down and everyone follows. Josh asks if they are the ones and Pell confirms it. The couple begins eating and all the others follow again. Mark spots a girl he likes on the other side of the table. Danny talks to one of the women who tells her that the babies there are raised by everyone. The couple stands up and performs some kind of ritual. Everyone stands and drinks in their honor. Then the two of them get carried away on their chairs. All of the people follow them again, except Mark. Everyone is gathered around a large cliff, looking up at it. They're waiting to witness the sacred custom. The couple gets carried on top of the cliff and the distant sounds of a horn can be heard. Josh stands next to Pell, asking if he can read the scrolls that one of the elders is. Reading out off. The old man and woman get their hands sliced open and they paint their blood over some. Ancient runes. The woman appears on the top of the cliff first. She jumps and crashes on the ground. Danny is completely shocked. 
Ingmar tries to calm Simon and Connie, who are beside themselves. Then the man appears on the cliff as well. He jumps, but falls on his feet and doesn't die. He gets beaten to death with a wooden hammer. The foreigners are freaking out and SIV explains the custom to them. She wants them to understand that it is a great joy for them and that when it's her turn it will be a great joy for her too. SIV says that they give their life away before it can spoil. Then she turns to Danny and says that it is not good to dodge the inevitable since it corrupts the spirit. The community is walking back to the village and the foreigners are running up front with Danny ready to fall apart. Christian comes back to the cabin and finds Josh there, working on his thesis. He tells him that he's decided to make his thesis on the village as well. Josh is angry because Christian already knew he was going to write his thesis on the Midsummer Festival. He tells him to find his own subject and passion, not take his. But Christian is adamant, he offers him to collaborate on the thesis or do separate ones. On the same subject. Josh goes to talk to Pell immediately, but he tells him that it doesn't matter what either of them want to write about because the elders are very protective of their rituals and they won't allow them to write about the village. He tells him that he'll talk to the elders to get him off his back. Meanwhile, Danny is packing frantically, but Pell comes over to talk to her. He apologizes, saying that he wanted to share this experience with his friends. She tells him that she doesn't understand anything and Pell says that he was most excited for her to come. He tells her that he understands what she's been going through because he lost his parents in a fire when he was young. Yet he found a new family in the community and he wants to give that to her because she deserves a real family. Later that day, the bodies of the old couple get disposed off in a ritual way. Christian checks on Danny but she asks if he was even disturbed by what they saw. He says that he was, but that it's a matter of cultural differences and that they should try to acclimate to the ways of the community. That night she asked Josh for a sleeping pill, but she's still just woken up by noises in the middle of the night. All of the beds around her are empty, so she follows a few people outside. Then she sees Christian and his friends leave. She screams and images from the ritual appear in her mind, one after the other, until an image of her family appears in the foot of the cliff. She's actually having a nightmare. Maya is actually awake. She goes over to Christian's bed and places something under it. Josh sees her do that. On the second day of the festival, Danny is the only one to sleep late. Pell is gardening when Mark and Josh approach him. He tells Josh that he can write his thesis, but that he can't use any real names or the location. He also has to collaborate with Christian. Josh asks him about the thing that Maya left underneath Christian's bed and Pell tells him that it's a love rune. Christian joins them and Pell gives him the news about the thesis and tells him that Maya seems to like him. Suddenly, they hear a man screaming and running toward Mark who's taking a piss over a dead tree. The man goes after him, but the others stop him as Pell takes Mark to the side and explains that he peed on the ancestral tree that has a lot of meaning for them. Connie runs into the cabin and tells Danny that her and Simon are leaving. One of the elders comes over and tells her that her fiancé has already left and that he'll meet her on the train station. She can't believe that he would leave her and gets horribly upset. Danny tells Christian about Simon, but he doesn't seem terribly concerned and continues his conversation about approval of mates within the community. The man tells him that they often need to invite people from the outside. Danny gets invited by one of the women to cook with them. She gives her an apron and they tell her that they are making meat tarts. Maya makes a special one. Meanwhile, Josh has a conversation with one of the elders about their sacred scrolls. The scrolls always have blank pages near the end because they are ever-changing. Their last iteration is written by the disabled child. He draws on the blank pages and the elders interpret it. The elder tells him that all of their oracles are deliberate products of inbreeding, so 
that they have unclouded minds open for the source. Mark lurks around the sacred temple, looking for the girl he likes, when a child calls him for dinner. They get served meat pies. Danny asks if anyone has seen Connie, and one of the villagers tells her that he drove her to meet Simon at the station. Danny doesn't understand how he could have left her like that and comments that she could see Christian doing that. The man that got upset about Mark pissing on the tree is still angry about it. Josh and Christian argue as well. He takes a bite out of the pie and finds a pubic hair in it, then looks at Maya. Mark gets called away by the girl that he likes. That night, Danny asks Josh for another sleeping pill. Later, he runs over to the cabin where the scroll is kept and starts taking pictures of it. Mark catches him doing it, but as Josh moves closer to him, he sees that there is something wrong. Suddenly, he gets hit over the head. The disabled child approaches the unconscious Josh wearing Mark's face. Christian wakes up the next day and sees that Josh is gone from his bed. At breakfast, Danny asks about Mark and Josh, but he says that he's not too concerned. One of the elders proclaims that the scroll had been stolen and asks that it gets returned safely. After breakfast, two of the elders approach Christian and Danny, saying that it's suspicious that two of their friends ended up missing the same day. Christian throws Josh under the bus, but Pell says that he feels responsible. Danny is sent off with the other women and Christian has to go to meet with SIV. A special tea gets prepared for the young women of the village, which Danny drinks as well. The ritual which they call the competition is about to begin when Danny realizes that the tea probably had mushrooms in it. An older woman proclaims the beginning of the competition and the women start dancing in a circle. Meanwhile, Christian is at SIV's home looking at the iconography on her walls. They sit opposite one another and she immediately tells him that he had been approved to mate with Maya. The women continue dancing and one by one drop down and out of the competition. Christian joins the crowd that watches the dance and one of the women gives him some of the mushroom tea. He glances at Maya and drinks it. Meanwhile, Danny keeps getting dizzy while dancing, but she doesn't stop or fall over. Only three of them are left, when she suddenly starts speaking in Swedish, with one of the other girls. As they laugh and dance, the other two run into each other. Danny is the only one left. Everyone stands up and circles her. The older woman crowns her as the May Queen. She gets her picture taken, and as they walk her away, Pell comes over and kisses her. They lift her in the air and take her to the table. Danny sits at the head and everyone follows her every move. When Christian sits down, she begins to eat and everyone else does as well. He doesn't understand what's happening and starts feeling the effects of the tea. The entire village cheers for the May Queen. They tell her that she's part of the family now. Maya calls Christian to follow her into the barn and Danny notices that there's something happening. SIV tells Danny that she has to bless their crops as the queen and doesn't allow Christian to come with her. She enters a carriage, being pulled by some of the young women from the village. As she's driven away, Christian gets asked to go to the barn again as the rest of he villagers stand for him. Danny blesses the crops in a traditional ritual, while Christian is being prepared by the elders to mate with Maya. They drug him again and lead him in, where the girl is waiting for him together with other women. Danny is still performing the blessing ritual. Christian makes love to Maya as the other women sing to her and to him as well. The May Queen comes back to the village and one of the women tells her that SIV is expecting horror. She hears something happening in the barn and goes to check what it is, regardless of the woman's pleads not to. Danny peeks inside and sees what is happening, that goes outside and starts screaming. The women take her away and get her to her bed. She freaks out and the other women start mimicking her cries. Christian is done with his part of the ritual and storms out of the barn. He gets confused and disoriented, trying to run away, when he sees a foot planted in the 
garden. Christian hides in a shed where he finds Simon's dead body. An elder sneaks up on him and drugs him again. He gets woken up by a woman who tells him that he can't speak or move. The final midsummer ritual begins, with Danny at its head. SIV proclaims that nine sacrifices will be made to the village, four of their own, for foreigners. And one chosen by the queen. Two of their own have already given their lives and two have volunteered, one of which is Ingmar. Pell is honored for bringing them new blood. Danny has to choose the last of the nine. It is between a local and Christian. She makes her choice. The bodies are being taken to the sacred temple at the foot of the village and are carefully placed inside. The final is being prepared by the elders and a few children. They open up the bear's body and place Christian inside of it, still alive. The elders bless the offering and give the two villagers drugs. The temple is ritually set on fire as the entire community is gathered outside witnessing. The offering. Everything inside gets burned away and the villagers convulse and cry, feeling the pain of their people inside. The May Queen looks onto the burning temple and cracks a final grin, 